Right, we are back with Sherlock Holmes. The new case, bloodbath. Brand new. Holmes, what happened? I feel deathly. And you look it. Let me examine you. Please don't tell me that you've returned to your old habits. The pupil is dilated. The temperature appears to be normal. I need to concentrate and count the heartbeats. I need to concentrate and count the heartbeats. Weak pulse, around 50 beats per minute. But you're dying, Holmes. Your pulse rate is dropping. We need to get you to the hospital immediately. The antidote. <laughs> Give it to me. The antidote? You mean that you're poisoned? Now. Please. Here, drink it all. Don't tell me that you did this to yourself. Hemlock and the Tura. I was compelled to. Holmes, imagine if I'd not returned home when I did. What might have happened? <laughs> I knew that you would. Mr. Holmes, Inspector Lestrade is here to see you. Mr. Holmes is unable to see anyone at the moment. He is unwell. A good day, Inspector. Ah, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to find you here. I need your help. This is a strange one. We have brought in two young bankers from the city, sons of lords, members of the chamber, and so on and so forth. They were found stranded in a rowing boat that was drifting on the Thames. A romantic escapade with an unhappy ending, Lestrade. What? Well, yes, they were both in the buff, but uh, what? As I said. And they were tied together. You are lacking in imagination, Inspector. Well, no, I'm not. Anyway. There was a banner flapping about in the boat with the RMS Oceanic printed on it and signed by the Merry Men. The Oceanic? Isn't that the largest steamer ever built? Yes. And these two young banker chaps are sons of the owners of the White Star Line, the company that built it. There are rumours of corruption. I'm not interested in politics, Lestrade. I'll keep it then. Here's another one that's a bit more complex and maybe to your liking. It's a murder, but we're unable to find any weapon. We haven't touched anything. It's at the Roman Baths in Strand Lane. A murder, a vanishing weapon, the Roman Baths. That's for us. Watson, fetch your hat. Let's go. Strand Lane Bath. place with a dreadful murder the body of sir rodney bentcliffe is still in the steam room it has not been touched per your usual instructions mr holmes i shall be waiting for you here but please hurry are you able to identify the men who are with the victim in the steam room yes the manager of the bath 
Sir Gregory Pitkin, a lad from the City Council, Garrow, and an archaeologist by the name of Blinkhorn. I think the plump one, Garrow, did it. He doesn't seem right in the head. Well, we shall see. We shall see. You found no murder weapon? No, and that's why I called you. All three witnesses and the victim were locked in when the murder occurred, and they remained so until we got here. We even had to pick the lock to enter. I see. Was there anyone else here, apart from those gentlemen in the steam room? Yes, a Mr. Phillips. He was the one who called the police. He will be able to give you more details. He's my top suspect. Let me just check. I was right, why not? I missed a clue. Yeah, Mex yeah the Mexican did. Anyway. Good day to you, Mr. Phillips. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer our questions? Certainly, sir. Got to do that profile. Corey looks stressed. Manchester City. Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night. Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at nine o'clock this morning. I wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it. So I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up and then there were others and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived. Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived, and Mr. Garrow followed. And what happened after that? I waited until they'd all entered the steam room, then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. You would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room? Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. Mm. Are the steam rooms on the other side, Mr. Holmes? Are the steam rooms on the other side, Mr. Holmes? This one. These clothes belong to one of the suspects from the steam room. Clothes belonging to one of the suspects. Champagne for a special occasion. An ice bucket to keep the champagne chilled. Unopened, it was intended to be enjoyed after the steam session.
expensive clothes belonging to one of the men from the steam room. Found all the clothes. Oh, they're just all in there still, as you would be. Good Lord, Holmes. Ah, death with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. Let us forget about that. There was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Death would have been instantaneous. It's pretty brutal. Hmm. The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. Look, Watson. He was wearing a ring. He very likely removed it before the steam session. Some dirt or earth. I'll take a sample. Well, the death is very recent, between 30 minutes to one hour ago. I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. There's a key there. We don't have many leads here. What concerns me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without disturbing anything else in the room. All right, Mr. Holmes. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. The murderer was in a hurry, or... He is an artist, or a ghost, or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. Probably the latter. You are ridiculous, do you know that? I should check this blood sample at Baker Street. This key was covered in blood. I should ask Phillips about it. Did that need to do that? The brazier is still burning. The heat here is extreme. I will need something to pick up this melted metal. It is too hot. I cannot reach into it. One lens is cracked, probably due to the temperature of the brazier. Well, that's not very clever. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short-sighted. Blood traces wiped on the towel. That's way too obvious for it to be him. It's now. horrible. So Rodney East dead. Can't we speak about it somewhere else? I'm in shock. I don't want to talk. It's horrible. I can't talk at the moment. Well, I found. Well, I think I found the weapon. But I can't pick it up. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? Uh, please wait. I need to do something first. I'm going to make him wait. Until I get the murder weapon out. This area serves as Sir Rodney Bentcliffe's workshop.
tools used by archaeologists in their research. Yeah, I need these tongs. These tongs. Well, I'm here. It's a shield. A shape has been cut in the plate. What should be done with it? Do I just take a shield? Archaeological findings. Old clay pots with numbers. I'm just carrying a shield around now. Glasses are here. Bentcliffe, it's who we bump. Archaeological findings, old clay pots with numbers inscribed upon them. A glass plate negative is missing. <laughs> it is a glass plate negative of an Egyptian statue. Glass plate negatives, a remarkable method for recording ancient civilizations. They're photos. Hold photos. Okay, I'm gonna get the metal thing out. should analyze this melted metal. Cool, I've got a lot of chemistry things to do. Okay. If you have to interrogate. I found him. I touched his shoulder, thinking that he was just asleep. Explains the blood. I can't understand what happened. Alright, we'll let him go. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? None, Lestrade. Off they go. This could have happened. <coughs> yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the frigidarium, the coal room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. All right, Watson. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. Hmm. What should we do next, Holmes? Interrogate. He's 
got any arse got here. I'm gonna go to Baker Street. So I can do all the chemistry stuff. Metal first. This is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of a reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. I acid. must take a pipette and place several drops of acid upon the samples. Pipette. Acid. Do it on the coin first. It's silver. The reaction is the same red stain. It is silver. Britannia silver quality. That was easy. Let us analyze this blood sample. There we go. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. Hydrogen peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. Pipette. Peroxide. Drop. Drop. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. Hmm. And dead. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Selenite. Did it? There was something. White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. The sample of dirt belongs to the white London clay region, located near the city of St. Albans. Right. I saw that then. Touch Toby. On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. To Scotland Yard. Evidence room first. This ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. 
I see the join. This ring was repaired and quite badly too, with silver. <gasps> Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. An old and rather dirty coin. Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. The last pages were torn out. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. To begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. I don't want to damage the traces. And then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson won't mind if I use his. It's very specific. Mr. Holmes, the coroner had... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. No. Yeah, Constable. But I'm not done with the evidence. A hand drawn map. Who is this? An ordinary pencil. Blue corns. Oh, we'll just skip his. An embroidered silk handkerchief. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. It's expensive, probably. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. When Garrow found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. A file with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wort flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. Right. 
Let's have a look at the body. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion, but there were traces of fungus, possibly contracted from the Egyptian tombs. The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease, if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. An unusual wound, inflicted by a curved knife which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. Hey. Some light bruising caused by a rope. The bruising is in lines. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. Though he's going to be if tied up. We'll go with that. Is there everything in there? Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? You're a prick. You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes. I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business, although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? When the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. Yep, you're definitely a prick. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? We were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament. Suspicious. Authoritarian. Unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behaviour? Look, I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea. But after all, it was not my business. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Shit. So it's the correct answer. Shit. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Oh, I'm not. 
How it's got to be the ring, then. Rather slowly, I would say. Bloody key. It's the bloody key. How was the work? Rather slowly, I would say. I've selected everything else apart from the How letter. How was the work? Rather slowly, I would say. Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the Bath's publicity. So yes, I changed my mind. Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. But I never liked that parasite. Do you believe him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? No. Some melted silver was found inside the steam room brazier. Do you know where it came from? Silver? No. Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. Sir Rodney did, I think. Nah. He is not a happy guy. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. What is your occupation? I'm an archaeologist, specializing in the Roman period. I'm working on several excavation sites at present, including the baths at Strand Lane. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the baths? Well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site, and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? It has. Thanks to Sir Rodney. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney? Well, I couldn't say that he was a kind man, no. Uh, but he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I'd shared my researches with him. Surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was, uh, God, a cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. Can you tell me what you saw today? Well, we entered the steam room, and we all went to sit down. Uh, the steam was particularly dense, and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting. But we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck. And with all the steam, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Garrow couldn't harm a fly. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being... A little strange. 
Well, yesterday, we had a small argument. Is that all? No. Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. Sir Rodney brought it back from his last campaign in Egypt. And he kept it for himself? Sir Rodney has uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad. And uh, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. I will keep an eye on him because I'm worried. How well were your researchers progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather well. This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop to your work. Uh, yes. But since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? No. Silver, you say? No, I don't know how it got there. You did it. What did the you silver? place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? No, I did not. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Last guy to interrogate. A good day to you. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Ah, uh, uh, uh. I am Tristram Garrow. This is the guy that found him. Who had the blood in his tail. Missed something. It's got to be here. What can I see? What is your occupation? I, I am a councillor at the uh, district chamber. And what were you doing at the baths? Well, I I follow the researches. I am. Uh, I interested in archaeology. You follow them? Yes. So many things happened and w we need to know. Or perhaps it's better hidden. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garrow. I, uh, I, I meant nothing, but by that I, I apologize. What was it like to work with Sir Rodney? It was like uh, working w with a genius. He was a hard man. But then, you, you know, this world is hard. There are always people who want to steal from you. And he, uh, he, he trusted me, but, uh, oh. Are you feeling unwell? Oh, I'm sorry. He is I. Oh, I remember. Oh, I, I feel so sorry. Do you need anything? I, uh, I, I, I feel bad. I, um, uh, I hear... No, nothing. I, 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 I'm better now. Please yeah, try to recall what you saw today. The room was so, so hot, I, I had to remove my glasses. I was not feeling so very well I in there. But you found the body. I saw the knife, you know. Flying through the air, I, I, I saw the blood. I tried to escape, I, I don't remember. You saw the knife? What did it look like? Everything was as if I in a nightmare. It all happened so fast. The knife was... Shining like, like gold. 
Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behaviour? Well, he, he had been rather secretive these past few days. Last Thursday, for, for example, I, I saw him leave. When he returned, it, it was very late. He showed me some wet coins, Roman coins, and uh, he started to laugh. His ring! Oh, it should be destroyed. Why do you say that? It is a cursed ring, digging dark secrets. Really? I... Uh, it is after me now. I know it. Uh, I shouldn't have worked on it in the workshop. It's too late now. You're this mad is the coin that, that he showed me. It is from the third century. It must be very rare. No, I, 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 I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. This will help me to calm down. Do be careful with the dosage. I, I will. I mean it. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? It didn't help. The power is too strong. This guy's mad. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? What? No. Garrow appears to be rather mentally disturbed. Either that or he is a good actor. Let's go on with that then.